Welcome to our daily devotion. You are here today to hear the Word of God with His message, promises, command, warning, and application for us. Faith is to believe God's Word is the very essence of receiving the promises that He says we can have. As the scripture says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It gives us knowledge on how faith comes, by taking in God's Word. Our word for today is taken in the book of John chapter 17 verse 4. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Message. It is the death of Jesus Christ is the fulfillment in history of the very mind and intent of God. There is no place for seeing Jesus Christ as a martyr. His death was not something that happened to him, something that might have been prevented. His death was the very reason he came. This greatest of all recorded prayers of Christ is prayed as he set out towards the Garden of Gethsemane and the Cross of Calvary and it gives us the most astonishing insight into the heart of God, the glory of God, the plan of God and the will of God. As the only begotten Son of God took on the role of sin substitute, on behalf of fallen humanity, so that we who believe on his name might be reconciled to God, through him. Promise. Christ came to earth as the sinless Son of God to live life as God intended man to live, perfect in God's sight fulfilling every aspect of God's law, submitting to guidance of God's Spirit, depending entirely upon God the Father and desiring to do His will. And because of man's rebellion against God and man's imputed sin nature, due to his disobedience, Christ came to live as God intended man to live, so that the life of God could be lived through a man, the man Christ Jesus. Although he was fully God, Christ lived as fully man so that God himself could live his life through his only begotten Son, and for our sake he learning obedience through the things that he suffered for us so that we may be forgiven for all our sins. One of the most amazing things that Jesus ever said, he said to his Father in heaven, I have completed the work you gave me to do, in fact, when he breathed his last, he said, It is finished. Let's live with the glory of God our highest priority. This is our purpose as God's children. The more we live by kingdom priority, the more we can rest assured that we can finish our lives with a line similar to Jesus. Command so often we don't look on obedience as a way to give God glory. Powerful praise songs and worship seem like a much more exciting way to give God glory. Leading someone to Christ is another example of giving God glory. But let's not forget that in the intentional acts of obedience we offer to God, both the simple and the hard things, both the everyday and the heroic ones, we are bringing God glory. Obedience is worship incarnate, worship coming to life in our flesh. So rather than looking at obedience as a demanding and sometimes harsh thing, let's look at it as the embodiment of praise. If you look at Leonardo da Vinci's famous Mona Lisa painting in the Louvre Museum, would you think of adding more brush strokes to it? Of course not. It was done by a master, so what could you possibly add to the painting to improve it? In the same way, that is how we are to look at Jesus' work on the cross. He cried out, It is finished. You cannot complete a completed work. 
you cannot finish a finished work. Our salvation is one. Our sins are all forgiven. We are made forever righteous by His blood. Christ paid completely and perfectly for our total forgiveness, righteousness and every blessing. Warning! Don't ever build your case for forgiveness on the idea that God is our Father and He will forgive us because He loves us. That contradicts the revealed truth of God in Jesus Christ. It makes the cross unnecessary, and the redemption, much ado about nothing. God forgives sin only because of the death of Christ. God could forgive people in no other way than by the death of his Son, and Jesus is exalted as Savior because of his death. We see Jesus, for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor. The greatest note of triumph ever sounded in the ears of a startled universe was that sounded on the cross of Christ. It is finished. In John 19.30, that is the final word in the redemption of humankind. Anything that lessens or completely obliterates the holiness of God, through a false view of His love, contradicts the truth of God as revealed by Jesus Christ. Never allow yourself to believe that Jesus Christ stands with us, and against God, out of pity and compassion, or that He became a curse for us out of sympathy for us. Jesus Christ became a curse for us by divine decree. Our part in realizing the tremendous meaning of his curse is the conviction of sin. Conviction is given to us as a gift of shame and repentance. It is the great mercy of God. Jesus Christ hates the sin in people, and Calvary is the measure of his hatred. We think that God is interested in our activity, that there are certain religious pursuits which we can perform which God will be pleased with no matter in what frame of mind we do them. That is why we sometimes drag ourselves out to church week after week when we actually have little interest in attending church, because we think that attending church is what God wants or we give for some missionary cause because we think this is what God is after. How little we understand God. It is not activity that he desires. It was not merely that which Jesus did which glorified the Father. It was not his ministry of mercy and good works. Others have done similar things. But it was the fact that throughout his life he had a heart that was ready to obey, an ear that was ready to hear, a will that was ready to be subject to the Father. It was his willingness to be always available, to forever be giving of himself, that glorified God. Application May we set aside self and live our lives as unto the Lord and finish his work, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them, to the praise of his holy name. Although this greatest of all recorded prayers was prayed before Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, his prayer encompassed time on both sides of the grave. Christ had finished the work of salvation that the Father had given him to do in every aspect of his life as God incarnate, glorifying the wisdom of God, the faithfulness of God, the holiness of God and the love of God. In fact, these three words, it is finished, come from one Greek word teleo. In the days of Jesus, a servant would use it when reporting to his master, I have completed the work assigned to me. The word means, it is finished, it stands finished and it will always be finished. Perhaps the most significant meaning of teleo is how it is used by merchants. The debt is paid in full. When Jesus gave himself on the cross, he met fully the righteous demands of the law. 
he paid our debt in full. Today, it is not our works that will bring us the blessings. It is Christ's finished work. Christian living is not about doing, but believing in his finished work. Under the law, we must do. Under grace, it is done. Maybe you are faced with overwhelming odds today. Jesus promises, it is finished. You are not going to be delivered because you have already been delivered. You are not going to be healed because you are already the healed. God healed you 2000 years ago. Isaiah 53 5 declares, by his stripes you are healed. You are already pregnant with healing. Keep resting in his finished work and it will manifest. My friend, the work is finished. The victory is won. Our enemies have been made his footstool. Our blessings have been bought by his blood. Live life knowing that there is nothing for you to do. Only believe. It is finished. Let's pray together, Father, what a magnificent grace that Christ should set aside his glory and live his life as a man and die a cruel death for us and rise again so that by faith in him we might live his resurrection life in us. Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be my example. We know that he was obedient from the heart to all your desires and commands. We sometimes falter and fail in our obedience. Please forgive us. Open our heart to understand that our obeying in you brings you glory alone. Father, thank you for blessing us with your message of hope and love today. With the Holy Spirit working in our hearts, we shall grow in our faith and ability to face unafraid each new day of our lives. How precious to us are your thoughts, O oh God! Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thank you that we can live in your light and walk in your truth. May the things that you have revealed in thoughts that we have shared today dwell in our hearts and stir us into action. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, and the continued fellowship, power, and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen.